All right, I'll do a roll call. Peter Thomas, that's me, I'm here. Um, Holly, here. Holly Lankowski, all right. Diane? You're what muted, Diane. What happened to Jay? Jay is right here. Jay's here. Okay, here. I got Jay. All right, so uh, hopefully Carolyn and, and Kelly will join us uh, momentarily. Um, Rocky, you're a guest, and Chris, you're coming from the uh, FOD representative, I think. Yep, I'm here to represent the Friends of Deer. Thank, thank, thank you very much for coming. All right, we're beginning the meeting at 634. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is a little crazy. The one question I needed to ask before we get going with the agenda is that uh, are there any agenda items that uh, people want to add to the agenda for today that uh, was published? Um, hang on one sec. I was zipping around trying to get both things open. Um, no, I think I'm good. Okay, I've got, I've got some items that I think will be quick, but I'd like to add, uh, just give you a brief on the anniversary cake, where we are. Um, Founders Day weekend, that's something that uh, Diana and I have been talking about. Um, I need to get a, a date for the lighting ceremonies and, and know a little bit more about it. And a couple of quick uh, announcements. First order of business, approval of the minutes from November 28th, 2022. Um, what, uh, Holly had some um, suggestions about amend, amendments last time. So she and I talked about those offline. I revamped the, uh, yeah. Um, so November was our last meeting and you didn't make it to that meeting. So we did not see a draft of minutes from that meeting. And honestly, I don't know if Carolyn was taking them because um, she was somewhat running the meeting because she kept checking in on the agenda. Um, I hmm. can pull I can pull together some notes that we can all look at, but I don't we don't have anything to review. Okay. So we're we're back uh, reviewing actually the okay, so so we don't have any November meetings, November minutes. Okay. How did I miss that? It was on the road. That's why I missed it. Um all right, so one of the things that we talked about in the October meeting uh, was an amendment to the October minutes. And I sent those out. I talked to Holly, made the amendments in there, just sent you all a copy of it about a half an hour ago. There were some minor changes, but we've made all of the um, amendments. And um, I guess what I'd ask is uh, if we can get an approval for the October um, minutes amend as amended. Yes. Um, so just just to be clear, I don't think we ever approved the September meet minutes. No, I was getting to that. We, okay, so we and tabled the, those, and the right. October minutes we didn't do at the last meeting because we were waiting for you to come on board. So okay. th those were never reviewed together, right. you know, for a motion. So my, my comments to you, I sent to you ahead of time so we wouldn't drag down the meeting. Right, yeah. So I made the changes in those minutes and I've made the changes in the September minutes. So, I can take one motion or two motions to accept 
both the September and the October minutes as amended. I'm, I'm aware of the October revision, and I would like to make a motion that we accept the minutes from the October meeting as revised today. I second it. I haven't seen them, so. Uh, you should have a, oh, hey, Kelly. Uh, got you here. Uh, I just sent the revised ones out. The, the, yeah, they're, I, they're in your I haven't been on my email. Yeah. Um, they, were, they, were, they were pretty minor, but they, they're anyway. Um, do you want me to send out the September ones as amended? I suppose we can get to those next time, or do you want to do them both now? Um, I did not see the amended September, so I can't speak to those. Well, I'll send those out after the meeting and uh, we can pick it up the next time. Do we have enough members who can approve the October minutes? Mm -hmm. We had a motion to approve. Um, all those in favor? Hi, Dan. Hi, Holly. Hi, Jay. If I get a vote, I guess we got a quorum to approve. Do <laughs> you want to abstain or you want to? Yeah, I have not seen it. I'll abstain. Okay. Um, and we'll table the approval of the September vote. I'll send those out after the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. All right, the first item on the agenda, um, Chris, what's your time schedule? What's your timeline tonight? No, I'm on for the whole meeting. You are? Okay. Do you, you, you mind we just go through the regular? Absolutely. I've got it in front of me, too. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, the time capsule. And I, I think I'll, I'll, I'll bring you a little bit up to date. Um, since the last meeting, uh, Holly did in fact uh, make inquiries about uh, what um, had been put in the time capsule uh, from Waitley and Sunderland. And I'm not sure whether Carolyn uh, got a chance uh, to speak with Hatfield or not. Um, one of the things that, and Holly, Holly sent me an email as a follow-up to that, uh, describing what Waitley had, which was seemingly most paper products, whereas Sunderland's went everything, included everything from a baseball bat to condoms. <laughs> so there seemed to be no consistency whatsoever in terms of what people decide. So I think we're pretty well open, but I also got a call uh, about the time capsule itself. They needed to start construction on it. So I took the liberty of giving them some parameters. The, the initial query was 18 by 18 by 18 inches. I suggested 24 inches long by 18 by 18. And that seemed to um, be okay with the uh, Friends of Deerfield to move forward with uh, producing the time capsule. Chris, that was to, you wanted to have that for the Jubilee, is that right? 
Yeah, Stan wanted to see if we could get it to have it on display for the, for the dinner dance. Uh, so we're we're good with that. So that 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 size frame was was fine with you folks. Yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. All right, moving on. Fireworks update. Awesome. Yeah. So um, I guess I have a little bit updated, and Carolyn would be the other one. Um because she, on behalf of the town of Deerfield, filed with the Department of Conservation and Resources for a special use permit for fireworks at the top of Mount Sugarloaf. I've been trying to work with the Department of Fish and Wildlife to figure out what we have for, there is one pair of Pelgrim falcons that nest on the ledges on Mount Sugarloaf. And unfortunately, the latest information is we do not have data on that pair as to when any fledglings leave the nest. So we suspect that when the DCR reviews the, the application that we put in, we suspect there's going to be questions specifically around that. And then it'll get bounced procedurally to Fish and Wildlife to comment on. And um, and then there's a separate entity called the Heritage in Massachusetts that deals with endangered species, um, the Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. So the bottom line is we probably need to start thinking about either timing of fireworks or alternative site because time is ticking along and um, there's probably going to be questions. I mean, if this was coming, if if the timing was later in June, we probably wouldn't have a problem. But being the 10th, the 9th or the 10th of June, the 9th being a, a rain date, if you will, um, it, it, might be, it might be just too close to when it's kind of a critical nesting situation. So, so that's the latest information when I talked to Fish and Wildlife earlier today. And they're... And again, the process is the DCR has to kind of create a file for this special application. And I don't know if the select board has heard anything back from that submittal because it was over a month ago that Carolyn did that. Um, but as of, as of um, I think last week's select board meeting, we had not heard anything back from the Department of Conservation and Recreation. So I'll probably be talking to the fireworks company tomorrow. I talked to them today also saying that we probably need to, if we can, if people are going to be in the area, start thinking about alternative sites down near the center of South Deerfield. Because I, I think we're going to have questions on, up on the top of Mount Sugarloaf for June 10th. And, and I don't know, I guess that long ago that date got, chosen and there were probably a variety of reasons for why it was chosen but i'm assuming the date isn't ever going to be changed it's more going to be a question of location oh do you have any uh, I, where are you with the parade I, I think this was to be sequential the parade in the morning and the fireworks at night i think that was the concept <laughs> Is what what would a, are we at all in a, in a in a situation where we can talk about a date change for the parade? Oh yeah, Joy, we just sent the invitations out. Okay, okay. I'm just it's just I'm not I'm not I'm just curious. Okay, so it really is the location that we need to uh, yeah. to pursue. What. What have we used before? I'm just not familiar with, haven't been here long enough to go to fireworks displays. I think they've had them um, way back in the day where the ball field is adjacent to the elementary school, which was called right. Dwyer Lot. Right. Um, I, and they have been years ago. And when I say years ago, probably to the tune of 40 off a of sugar loaf 
oh, way back in the day. Or 20 years ago. 20? Jerry, please stop. Off of Sugarloaf? Who's speaking? Is Rocky trying to talk? No. Okay, I can't hear whoever's talking. My husband, please ignore him. <laughs> we used to do them all the time. I know that in the late 70s and 80s, there was, they actively did it. Right. But then it, there was an abrupt stop. Yeah. Correct. And after that, weren't they done either at the high school or Dwyer Lot in that area? Dwyer Lot. I remember going to them. Yeah. In, in, in conjunction with what Chris was saying, I just looked it up, and the uh, the, Fal uh, the uh, Falcons leave the nest in mid June. Okay, so okay, here, here's the dilemma, and I'm not saying a hard no, but we have a problem right now with a lack of people taking care of things. And the parade work group, who have been doing a really good job, is a small group of people. And we just sent out the invitations. Kelly, was it a week ago? It was a week ago, right? Because Pam, Pam was putting them together. Yeah. So, um, you know, could we change the date? Sure. But part of all our decision making was Frontier was still and, and uh, Deerfield Elementary were still in session, so the school kids would be able to participate and not be out of their school environment. The marching band, hopefully from the high school, would still be available because if we push too much into June uh, or past June, now we're basically looking at skipping the summer and doing something in the fall. Um, and we're starting to, you know, try to put some of these widgets together, including um, post parade stuff, which is a whole other discussion I can get to. So, I mean, do you want me to jump in about what we've done so far, or is it just a date and could we look at changing it? No, don't, don't change the date. Uh my inclination would is just find an, an alternate site and, and keep things going the way they were. Okay, so we have obviously stumbled into it's Deerfield Academy's reunion weekend, which originally we felt that was a different population. It wouldn't be as big a deal. I just found out a few days ago, and we were going to be discussing this offline with the parade work group, but Lori Baronis just found out that the Greenfield Pride Parade is the same day, June 10th. Oh, well. And it's a big parade. They draw a lot of people in. Mm -hmm. um, I did email the Pride um, Franklin County Pride group they are meeting sometime this week. They'll get back to me with more info. Yeah. But they said typically their parade runs noon to two. We're looking at two to four with maybe some competing groups who might be in both parades. Um, and so that was gonna be a point of discussion at our next meeting. Diane? Didn't you just say you put date cards out or you sent out info we sent out invitations yeah and it already has the date um it's getting pretty complicated is there any way you could keep the date keep the date change the time if it if it interferes with the greenfield parade but you know find a backup site for the fireworks and and you, you can't change too much. You've put a lot, a lot of work into what you've been doing, trying to get things together. And people are sort of remembering the date too. So, so the other blow up is we were getting some really good dedicated help from the rec department um, in Deerfield for the post parade. 
And now, um, because of some other complications, uh, that help has been pulled. So if we're trying to coordinate post parade, um, we need somebody to take the reins on that. And so that's another complication as the clock ticks away and we are less than six months as of today from that date. Kelly, any thoughts? Uh, I say it's easier to move the date in my opinion. It sounds like there's too much going on. If we're not getting any support <clears throat> with the post event and we're having other complications with competing parades and everything else, I just, the logistics, it seems like a nightmare. I don't have the bandwidth to plan the an after event. Mm -hmm. um, I've been pretty clear on that. And I just felt my stress level go pretty high. Um, so I don't know. I think it would, yeah, the, the people recognize the date at this point, but oh my God, Greenfield having a parade at the same time, trying to manage all that. It just seems like a nightmare. Well, I do think that, you know, in the Northampton community, I mean, you can speak to the pride parade. It's huge. And I know Greenfield has been trying to show their support and dedication to, you know, uh, all different communities. And so in, in doing so, they're trying to grow this. And I only think they've done it a couple of years. And so, I mean, I will know more when I hear back, which will probably be in a few days. Um, they said they were meeting sometime this week, but that's just like hot off the press news. And then Kelly and I were notified about the rec department issue just a few hours ago. I didn't even know about that. So, oh, I'm sorry. You that's news. To me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Diane, you guys are planning it. Do whatever you feel, but feel right. Feels right. Has Greenfield, no, I, I, I mean, Greenfield's to... advertised. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if they have yet. No. Um, but the date of their parade was the same weekend last year because I went back and looked it up. So I think they're trying to be consistent. Yeah, that that's way people what would know. Do. Yeah, makes sense. Would it be a week later? Would we have the would, parade would a, week a week later? Well, I don't think that solves the issue with Sugarloaf Mountain. I mean, if we're trying to remedy a few oh, okay. things. All righty. Um, Kelly, do you know when school gets out? It's usually, it's around the 9th, 10th, unless there's snow days, then it goes of, later. Of June. of June. Yeah. Okay. And there's no second choice for the uh, fireworks site? Um, Chris, where, where else were you considering? No, it would have to be down near like wire lot. And maybe there's some um, a tree house. There might be some land out there. The railroad might be a complication for that. But the back we, we, of Sugarloaf? I mean, no, excuse me, Frontier? Their their yeah. back area? Frontier is yeah, not. That, that, that could be another one. But but again, um, some railroad issues, you know, that might be a problem. But but we haven't scouted it out in detail. They focused on a site visit to Mount Sugarloaf first mm -hmm. with the chief of police and the chief of fire. I think we need to get, you know, some key people together on this date. Um, Kelly and I could, you know, try to figure out some dates, but I think, you know, maybe whether it's Zoom or in person, you know, Chris, you, because you're representing fireworks, the select board, I think needs to get involved. We just need to like get a better handle on this, you know, and if, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were knee deep in in the using June 10th and soliciting some bands and we are waiting on a contract for the one we wanted to hire um, and needing to finalize where that would be. And um, part of what, again, Kelly, I'm sorry you don't know this because you didn't see email, but 
they, both the, the police and rec department were recommending we use Frontier for the post parade, um, which might dovetail nicely with either Treehouse or Frontier for the backup for fireworks, if you could keep things segregated. But um, everybody wants to have like a beer cart of some kind, and you can't have it on school grounds unless you go to the we just found out today, you have to go to the school committee for them to give a one day waiver because it's against the law to have alcohol on school grounds. And if someone serves it, has it or anything, they can be arrested. So it's, it's complicated beyond what Kelly and I signed up for, which is to put together a parade. <laughs> um, so I think, you know, we'd be amenable to working with whatever group to figure out the most appropriate date, but we were going with what was previously approved. I mean, I don't know what the solution is, but I mean, just as an idea, I mean, we, we, we went over a number of reasons to pick the date originally. So if we can resolve that situation, then I think we can resolve the fireworks part of it. I, you know, well, we we certainly can't have it anything earlier because our time frame is very tight right now. Yeah. So, could we consider later? I guess that would be the only thing, and I don't think summer is the time because I think it's too hot and the kids are out of school and people are on vacations. Well, I think we did a good job picking the date in the first place. It just, uh, is there, I guess my question is in part, aside from Greenfield, is somebody else gonna throw up and have a, you know, decide to have a parade on the 10th too? I, I just, it, it seems like that caught us all off balance and, and what well, you you said something about timing though are we looking at the morning for the parade and then greenfield potentially is looking in the afternoon for their parade or how no green greenfield parade last year and this i don't know about this year but last year was at i think 12 noon our invitation went out for two o'clock. Oh, okay. Two o'clock start running approximately until four. Now that doesn't mean it's a two hour parade, but logistically we just wanted to have a window. And then um, the post parade stuff would spill over with food, music, leading up to the culmination of the fireworks for that day. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't Greenville that post parade stuff also up there? Uh, for the pride parade? Yeah. I don't, do they do post, see again, I don't have enough info because I immediately sent an email to them saying we'd like to coordinate. And they said, I'll know more after we meet this week. How about moving our parade back another hour? They're going to be staying until dark anyways. Why would we move it back an hour? That would compete more with Greenfield. Later. Later. Uh, oh, no. I think that logistically, I think that's too hard for people who travel. If we're soliciting bands to come in and participate from other parts, of New England later in the day you I, maybe you're not understanding me an hour later in the day start at three well what did you originally you had it at what time two o'clock and it's competing with the noon of Greenfield why not move it one hour to start at three is that 
I think call? having, if we have any expectation of having this, we're not going to have the same people in parades. People are not going to yeah. jump and run to the other. And what, uh, to go with what Chris said, I went on the website and they did have events afterwards at the fairgrounds. Yeah. Fairgrounds. But is just start our parade an hour later to accommodate I, people that want to go to both. What, I, what I'm trying to say, Diane, is we're going to look to um, solicit like fife and drum vans, uh, um, the Shriners. Of, we, we've been looking to um, hire to come. Some of those people travel a distance and getting done later in the day, if they have to travel, um, you okay, know, for bands already. from out of state, you know, the whole notion of them coming to our community is, you know, we would like it to be a convenient time of day for people. Um, so I'm, I'm, I mean, can we consider it? Sure. But, you know, I don't think it really helps the issue of, competing with Greenfields. We only do this every 50 years. Oh, well. No. Do you expect the, the competition from Greenfield to be really heavy? I just don't know the situation well enough to know. I don't either. I've never seen that. I've never been to the parade, so I don't know. But you have been to and participated in the Northampton one. Yeah, it's huge. You have various towns and things like that. I don't know how big Greenfield has gotten at this point. Yeah, um, I can say that Lori Barona said that her um, real estate company will be involved in that parade as well. So, oh, you, uh, you know, do they have enough staff that they could be available for um, she said Caldwell Banker is involved in that, but I don't know the time of that other parade, but I think it might be 12 to two. And again, looking at the website, that's what it looked like. Um, so in any case, um, and what's, what's, when's Northampton? They're, they're May, early May. They're okay. They're early. Yeah. I mean, the other side of it is I don't want to compete with the town next to us and all of their events and their festivities. I feel like there's that issue too. You know, they're having, they put together a great event and here we are trying to compete with them. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. What did you say, Diane? I said, it's not competition. It's it, coincidentally, we found out that the date's the same time, but it's never... It's not about a competition. I'm not about meaning that, but it's going to yeah. become one because yeah. people are going to have to choose one or the other because it's going to be too much going on at the same time. And and it could be also for businesses that want to do some support. They're going to feel mm -hmm. over tapped well, because well, I guess do some research on this one and we'll have another meeting at some point. You know, uh, that's all we can do at this point. What day is the 10th? Ever, is it a Saturday? If yeah. is, is there any sense of moving it to the 11th? It doesn't have to be on. Um, I mean, it's still, last it's meeting, still on yeah. the weekend. In, in the last meeting, when we talked about rain dates for fireworks, the preference was just Friday night, the 9th, versus Sunday, the 11th. Um, again, again, if Greenfield's going to be a big deal thing, that the whole weekend is kind of like in under competition at that point. Kelly, do you think we can hold on this until the first of the year? Because I mean, I, it's complicated right now with people's time and availability. Um, but I think we need to have more detailed discussion on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I agree. We need more people to weigh in. Maybe if um, our next parade meeting is going to be January 9th, maybe if we can get some key people to join us then, we can make a decision at, at that point because that would still give us enough time to get some notification out. Mm -hmm. 
Because would the alternative become early in the school year, like August, September? I, I honestly don't know what the alternative is because the first weekend of September is the Northampton Fair. The second is the Greenfield Fair. And I know we avoided those. And I, I can't remember when Conway Festival of the Hills is. That's October. It is October. So, yeah. you know, we'd be tippy toeing around a little bit of other people's stuff to try to thread the needle and find a date. I'm not opposed to considering that, but we've got to kind of make some decisions mm -hmm. soon. When did Sunderland have theirs again? I can't remember. I went. Father's Day weekend. Um, so it would be the weekend after the one um, we're considering. It, <clears throat> so, because Father's Day that next year must be the 18th. Um, so the 17th, 18th would be the Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. But th by then, Frontier's I'm sure out, which means it would be voluntary who wants to come back and participate. And, you know, we were kind of hoping our local high school band would be part of the parade. Well, I, it sounds like we don't have enough information to really make even an intelligent until we know what Greenfield's up to and whether there's alternatives. Holly, if, see if yeah. Greenfield can move there. See if Greenfield is still early enough in the planning stages. To yeah, move. well, that, that was week. one of the things I'm trying to connect, but until I have some information I, I, from I somebody. I think school kids would be too involved with that one. Yeah. No, but if it's that their standard cool, weekend you know, that, that they have it, yeah. you know, I, I can understand as an organization and you're trying to build up an annual event. Yeah. And if it's the third year you're doing it on a certain weekend of yeah. the year. I understand. You yeah. know, so if that's what if that's what it is. Okay. Um Kelly, are you okay with us seeing who can join us for our January 9th <laughs> meeting and we'll make a decision then? Absolutely. And we'll do some offline conversation within our group and take it from there. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll just we'll just postpone further discussion until you've had your meeting. And you're you're looking at uh, your next meeting is January 9th is that what you that said? Yeah, January 9th. It'll be at 6:30. Typically we meet in person, but we'll we'll see if I can get it set up so we can have other people participate if need be. Okay. I'm well, certainly sorry that you're having to go through this. I mean, it sounded it's a tough enough job as it is without having this thrown in your plate. It, it really hasn't been very smooth. So it just sort of put it on the pile. <laughs> okay. All right, the uh, next uh, item on here was the history working group updates. Um, I was uh, the, just so you know, the oral history project is, is well underway. Uh, we've got eight people trained. Uh, we've got equipment for three sets of um, mics and stuff. Um, I went and bought them <laughs> so we'd have them. Um, anybody would like to buy an extra set of mics when we're through, I'll sell it to them. But <laughs> anyway, um, we've uh, we're beginning to do the, we've got about 50 folks identified that we want to interview. And we're beginning uh, 
we've already completed nine interviews. Um, and one of the things, well, these usually run an hour or more. Uh, a couple of people we've done multiple interviews for, but the interviews involve both the interviews, there's a logger for the interview. These get typed <laughs> up, they're stored on the cloud. Uh, we're back and forth with the people that are interviewing. So it's a fairly complex under, undertaking, but some of the interviews are really very enlightening about changes that have gone on through time. Um, and some of the folks are, are able to go back uh, into the 1930s, into the 1920s. We've got some old photographs, old family photographs of people that are 80 years old, but the photographs is they're five years old picking onions. So it's, it's, a, it's a real uh, eye opener. And I think we can do a lot with, once we get the, the enough interviews under our belt, we'll, we'll be able to move forward with some life end products. Um, in terms of the 350th cake, if you haven't seen it, it's in front of the, the fire station. Um, Beautiful. It took a lot of work uh, to get it there. Uh, a lot of people putting, doing different things. Carolyn, uh, you want to raise your hand and vote yeah, and, and say you're here? Oh, yes, I'm here. I apologize. I had a CCI meeting earlier and I uh, needed to report on the Jim McGovern's uh, earmark potential. So okay. I. I, that's why I'm late. I apologize. So um, we uh, took it apart one Saturday, um, loaded it onto two huge uh, flatbeds that uh, was donated by the Galenskis and um, brought it down to Deerfield. They got a crew of eight to nine to set it up on the following Saturday. Uh, and Fred Vecta took control of that crew and uh, we got it up and he's been working on it part-time uh, rewiring the electricity. There's 350 candles on this. Uh, we needed sockets for another for 30 of them, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's been an ongoing uh, positive way forward to get this cake in, into shape. Uh, but we've actually lit it. It will light, <laughs> and uh, it looks real good at night. So um, I'm very pleased, and uh, a lot of people helped through this process. When are we actually going to uh, light it? Well, that was my next sort of question uh, later on in the agenda, but we can do it right now. I mean, it, it seemed to me we were talking about a lighting ceremony in the two commons in Deerfield, but I, does it make sense to do all of it together? Does it make sense to just have the cake have its own um, lighting? <clears throat> yeah, Holly. Um, originally, because we were trying to be fair to all areas of town, um, and I will say we were, naive and incredibly enthusiastic about all the things we were going to do in 2023. We were going to have lighting on three nights of Martin Luther King weekend. The Friday night, the cake, the Saturday night, South Deerfield, and the Sunday night, um, we were going to do something in Old Deerfield on the Common. I think without enough boots on the ground to pull off a whole bunch of stuff. We ought to just dedicate our time to lighting the cake and starting it off, you know, with that. I don't know if anybody else has any other thoughts. Well, I don't think we've had anybody prepping to do any lighting in the commons, is that true? That yeah. is true because originally we had other members on this committee and we 
don't have some of them. And so I think that fell off a bit. What do, what do you think about having an open house at the fire station and a light and a cake lighting? I think it's great. How much parking can you have there though? You know? You, you... Well, for, for the event, it's got a huge parking lot. Um, it, it, the, the only difficulty with having a huge event is that you've got the entrance and exits from an emergency facility onto a, you know, a pretty well-traveled intersection with, with lights. Um, well, you, you also have the um, South County, which has their egress right. out of that parking lot. And if they have to get somewhere quickly, we can't have a lot of people in the way along that driveway. Yeah. Um, so, um, what if we just had a small ceremony um, the first weekend? I mean, not because the gala is on the 31st. How about that following weekend, the 7th? We just have a small lighting ceremony down on the town common or at the front of the town hall or something. Well, what are we going to light? No, we just turn on the cake. We, you know, the cake be turned on that day. Right. And we just You're saying have the ceremony elsewhere. When when was the Founders Day? That's May. May. Oh. That's a little late. <laughs> yeah. I I just I just feel like people would love and appreciate the cake being lit up, but to come to an actual ceremony or to do anything in the middle of a cold winter. I mean, we don't have any guarantee what the weather will be and maybe it won't be that cold but it could be a main snowstorm so i'm almost thinking that on sunday january 1st we just light up the cake you know have turn on the lights and then we have at a later date we celebrate founder's day or something that related to the cake at that point i mean it's it's beyond but I just can't see what no one number one nothing has been prepped number two you don't want people to come out to an event where not much is going to happen you know what I mean we we want excitement so I don't know what do you, Chris what do you think you've got a lot of experience in this kind of stuff yeah and what I would say is if, if you wanted more people involved you just uh live stream it to a different site, the lighting, and then you have inside refreshments or something in a bigger venue. If That's you wanted good. more people. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was actually, I didn't think about live streaming so we could be somewhere else, but I was thinking have it shown live on FCAT so people could watch it from home that, okay, it's official now and it's being lit, but live streaming it to, you know, someplace where we could have refreshments would be nice. We have the big screen at town, town hall. We could, we could have just refreshments and, you know, sign ups for other committees and stuff. Um, but I, I kind of almost think that we don't want to use Martin Luther King weekend because I mean, we were, we were thinking of doing that because we were going to do all this stuff, but people go away too. And, you know, it, you know, it's per, if the weather is cold enough and we have snow, then people are going to go skiing and, you know, so I'm, I'm just thinking we should try to do it that first week in January sometime. Maybe we could do it at a selectman's meeting. You know, we we have a meeting. We could have a meeting on uh, Wednesday the fourth, or something like that. I don't know. You know, what would be nice too is to be able to have a small group at least for the people that work. You know, hard to get the cake up. Right. Maybe so. Have a have a recognition and a streaming 
you know, this is the lighting of the cake, but maybe we could have it at the town hall. Right. And that way we could thank Golinski's and Fred Becca and, yeah. you know, even Tim uh, Hilchey, who had, you know, ended up working on it, you know, <laughs> whatever. I mean, I mean, I, I feel like we should, you know, it, it, it's not like what we had originally in, um, envisioned, but it doesn't mean that it's not significant. Um, just a point. Um, we've had it on our web page for a long time that it was going to be lit that weekend. Well, I don't think it will be a big deal because not a lot of people <laughs> look at the web page, I don't think. So if we all of a sudden take it off a month, more than a month away, I don't think people are going to be shocked. Okay. I just want to yeah. make mention. Yeah, no, it's a good thing that you did, Holly. But I, well, I feel like... One the reason I noticed it is because one of the library people reached out as far as next year and where they fit with what they may be doing. And they said, do we have any planned dates so far? So I gave them that weekend as well as the other things that were planned to date. But um, we well, we can let them know. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the 14th, which was one of the original dates, uh, people, if you want to FCAT, the people putting the last minute touches on the bulbs and all the signage, and then the Sunday, the 15th, uh, do the town hall thing. Keep the original weekend, except you won't have it the 16th. The candle, the cake will be lit on the 16th. Come take a ride. Mm. Mm. I'm not sure I quite followed that. I didn't, I'm not, can, can oh, you just- Well, instead of changing the weekend, which has been posted, it's been posted as 14th through, through the 16th, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Was Saturday, that, that was January. Uh, can just post you guys putting on the last minute lights and getting the cake ready. And then Sunday, light the cake with this, like, this the January? live streaming. This was January? Correct. This is the date that was established before I joined the group. I have it written down. Yeah, you know, it's on the calendar, or actually it's on the calendar still. I'm I'm just, I think the cake is so cool though. And to give up two weeks of dark winter when <laughs> after the holidays, it's, it's, I think, sad. In my mind, it would be so cheerful to see that cake lit up the well, first couple of days of January, I think. Then if light it up and have a party on the uh, on the 15th after all. I don't know. I know. Yeah. Well, we can the light the early. Watch the video. You can redo the video of you guys building it just so <laughs> people can watch the work went, that went into it. You know, we can oh. look at the cake and... Uh, well, somebody needs to make a motion to do something because we do need to change this. Holly is absolutely correct. We need to correct the information on the website. So what do you guys want to do? I think in light of the fact that we are thin for volunteers for other things that we need desperate help for, um, I think we should maybe just offer up ditching our original idea. And as Carolyn said, get the cake lit. It'll be a beacon. I mean, we could advertise it ahead that it's going to be lit. So if anybody wanted to just go see it go on or something, but um, not make a bigger deal other than lighting it. I think at this point, oh, come on. we got bigger fish to fry. Well, if you want some FCAT coverage, I think, I mean, I shouldn't speak for her, but my wife would be willing to take the video cameras down there and show the cake being lit. So it could be trans. You know, yeah. And then we and then we and then we put it on the FCAT cable so it it, it yeah. loops around. I mean, that's why I'd like to do it <laughs> earlier than later, just because I think it's a cheerful, happy thing, and 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 we can get people to support, you know. 
every time they drive by, they're getting excited, hopefully. Well, maybe what we can do is just work out uh, if, if FCAT's involved, and I, I think they would be, uh, is just do a little half a minute presentation beforehand, just saying this is the, and these maybe recognize who, who, who helped and that sort of thing, have somebody do that and then have the lighting. And then it I can be broadcast multiple times. I think that's wonderful. Uh, so what date do we want to pick to do this? I'd light it on the first, Sunday the first. I think I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Because you, you just don't want to miss out. I, I mean, it's dark, and, you know. Mm. It's I can change dark. it on the website right now. Yeah. Oh, see, great. <laughs> We're gonna light the tree January first. Right. <laughs> what time? What time? I will make the motion that we're going to light the tree on January 1st. At what time do we want? How about five o'clock? It's just easier that way. Because well, it's still dark. I mean, it's dark at five. Dark at 4 30. Well, it's yeah. dark, dark at 4 30. I think I think we should do it. We should try to get people there just before dusk. So does can someone look up on their iPhone when the um uh what the date when the sun goes down on the January 1st is probably pretty close to 430, but I can't 430, 428. Oh, perfect. So let's do it at 430. It's not pitch, pitch dark, but it's enough dark that if anybody is interested, they no, could come. Not. And and but FCAT would be there. They'd have the, you know, the dark, the it certainly would be lit up and it would have enough dark for the lighting to show. Okay. Okay. Four, so I make a motion that we do it January 1st at 4.30 and we'll put together some little statement that Peter will read thanking all the people involved and all the process where the cake came from um, how it got to Waitley, the, how, who brought it up from Waitley, who did all the lighting, all that kind of stuff. Problem with DOT, you know, DOT said no. <laughs> no. And I don't so, think we should talk problems, only good no, stuff. No, 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 well, we, the, we the solution it was we got the senator, or Carol, yeah, got Joe, the senator. Joe Comerford, you know, intervened for us. So, um, I mean, that was, that was four days worth of work. So, I mean, so let's do that kind of stuff. Well, we, we, I second we, it, I second I'm, it. We can be positive all the way. And the other thing I will, um, we well, can do. Well, because it's against their rules and we were able to have a waiver and that's a positive thing. The the other thing that I, I'll talk to my wife about this, but we have enough photographs of this thing coming down and going up that we may be able to put together a little video that can introduce the lighting. Perfect. Perfect. Yes. I mean, there's... Please. I got to bet there's at least 50 or 60 pictures of people going to town working on this thing. So... And, and it's we'll going to lever, lever it next? Yes. It's going to, to lever it, but the interesting thing about it is it's going to lever it until May, and then it's going to Ludlow. Oh, so both, the, both towns the, could get it. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So that's part of the story, too, that this cake keeps circulating. Right, because it started where? Westfield, right? Westfield, Westfield. Yeah. Westfield originally uh, paid for it. And it was like a twenty thousand dollars thing or fifteen thousand dollars thing. It was quite expensive. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then they and then they gave it to Hatfield. And yeah. so it and then Hatfield gave it to to Waitley. us. We allowed Waitley. Waitley. No. Hatfield gave it to Waitley. Well, they were going to go to us, and then we said no. It's fine to use it as long as we got it back for the you know twenty twenty three. Yeah. Anyhow, so that was part of the deal. And Are we voting? 
Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Holly. Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Jay. Aye, Kelly. Okay. Great. Good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'll see I, think if I, can. Gonna be, I think that's going to be really peppy and nice. And that's better than already, you know, what we had planned. Okay. It's a good way to start the year. It yeah, is a, it's a really good way to start the year. Okay. And well. everyone's going to have a fun time at the gala. So guess what? It's going to be really great. Well, I'll get a hold of Fred and make sure we're all set to to do this, and I'll 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 check with FCAT and see if we can set it up. Perfect. I'll I'll put a pitch into Jonathan tomorrow when he's taping the selectmen's meeting to make sure that we get it. Okay. Great. Uh, let's see. And Diane wants to talk, and I will talk about Founders Day, but we'll do that under uh, new business. Um, um, hopefully, these aren't, aren't grandiose plans, but Peter and I have been talking, and I went over with a, uh, a little schedule of things to do. I've been in contact with the grammar school, the art teacher, and I like to do something called 350 Bells. Although Peter told me they may not have that many kids in school these days. Uh, it's 400 and something. In Hi. Deerfield Elementary? Yes. Good. Very good. Enough work. No choice. So anyways. Um, this is last year's. This is last year's. I don't know what the current year okay. is. Okay. Well, that's all right. Uh, close enough. Uh, anyways, uh, 350 years, I've come upon a way to get the kids to... Um, I'd like them to make 350 bells uh, out of something that doesn't self-destruct in a knapsack. Uh, if we can arrange, have the students or some of the older students bring the bells to the church, which is next to the senior center, and find a way to put the bells up as a form of decoration. Saturday, I'd like to have, just have it open for people to come in, maybe have something with history, pictures and things like that, and possibly um, old games like croquet and stuff like that in the field next to it, but just very casual. Um, the one thing I was thinking of is a tractor parade, but I don't know how I'm gonna get that off, but anybody that wants to, please get in touch with me because I think we should have a tractor parade and perhaps bring in some old cars also. Um, that would go from frontier to the town. Um, the big thing is, is Founders Day, which is a Sunday. Uh, that's when we would like to open up uh, the church and Peter would give some talks. Uh, the bells would be there. Oh, by the way, the idea of the 350 bells was um, for students to visualize 350 years. Uh, for them to see all those bells is each represents years that the town has, has existed. I thought it'd be a nice visual, plus they'd be part of our celebration. And anyways, getting back to Sunday, um, do very more, more structured, but still casual conversations of different facets of history. Uh, I'm not sure what they would be. Um, Diana, that's I think what that's, we're talking about. that's wonderful. What what weekend is that again? Uh, that is the 5th, 6th, and 7th, 7th being Founders Day. And uh, Chris, if, if um, something I was thinking about, if you need an idea for uh, things to possibly sell, a limited edition 350 only, um, bells that have the logo and the date on them to go along with the 350 bells. Oh, and on Sunday, we'll be ringing the bells. That's why it was going to be so the history was uh, we would like to ring the bell, the bell on the church or Peter's. We're going to figure out how to do it. Uh, ring the bell 350 times to celebrate 350 years of Deerfield. Okay. I don't want to put a kibosh on this. 
but Deerfield Academy is supposed to be working on the church and they keep putting us off. Uh, you know, they were supposed to come this fall, then they're going to do this winter. Right. Now they're going to do the spring. I have a feeling that it won't get done and, but it actually might not even get started. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, let's plan on it uh -huh. and we'll try to work around this. Uh, and I'll be very cognizant of this weekend uh, to make sure that we have the ability to do something. Okay. Yep. Just not sure uh, um, what, what construction is going to be happening. Cause you know, we're trying to put that we, but we we need need delay to the lecture room. I think. Right. That's well, I, right now I have my <clears throat> uh, emergency dispensing stuff in there, but I'm we'll supposed to. Yeah. I have to clean it up. I have to clean it up. Um, you know, hey, Car Carolyn, in terms of the what we need, though, we don't need the meeting room. We don't need the community room. The only thing we need to do is to get access into the bell tower. Oh, and, okay. And maybe some okay. of the pews in the church itself. And I don't think Deerfield is going to be working in there anyway. Well, actually, in the main section, the pews are going to be uh, removed. Okay. So, um, and we're working on the floor, so there might not even be a floor there. But, um, you know, because there's problems with the floor. Well, if, if worse comes to worse, you could, we can could access it and go through the front doors up the stairs and to the bell tower. Absolutely. I said, you don't even have to go in the, in the church. I'm just throwing this out there as what right. the current timeline is. But we also just received um, a grant um, to do facilitate some other planning. So we might end up postponing it until the summer anyway. So this is just okay. not going to even happen. But, my, but don't worry, my um, emergency dispensing stuff is going to be out of there anyway, mm -hmm. because we have to move it so that if they ever do the renovations, yeah. but we were using it for active storage. So it wasn't a yeah. um, abandoned building, which costs like a thousand percent increase in insurance. So um, that's why I got my stuff spread all yeah. out over there. <laughs> If you so could just make a mindful of the, of the dates, I will. It's part of the other deal. So we ring the bell 350 times. But we're also going to have a book so that every kid that pulls the bell rope can sign in as participating oh. in the 350th anniversary. I think that's that, so fabulous. And that you can put in the um, time capsule. I, I think that is so fabulous. This is what we want to do. We want to involve the kids like I ever always say, so that when they go to celebrate the 400th, some of these kids will remember because they will still either come back or they'll still be here. So it's it's a wonderful thing. So thank you. Thank you for so much, Diane, for thinking of this. I will just try to be very mindful of, of your activity. I'm sure we can accommodate whatever you need to do. Maybe the weather will be beautiful. We can set stuff up outside if necessary, That's whatever. Very casual. We'll, we'll, Right, we'll be able to sort it out. I, but I just okay. wanted to throw it out that this is hanging over our heads at the moment. So, all righty. Um, I have another question. Uh, what's the status of the Leary lot? We passed everything. Are the plans already ready to happen, or? Uh... Yes. Well, what we're we our lawyer wrote up a list of stuff that <clears throat> has to happen as part of the process of swapping the land, and. Um, uh, we reached out to Hampshire Lumber, and unfortunately, the the person that um, owns the lumber yard, his wife fell, and she had to have a hip replacement or something like that, she, or she had a hip operation. So we're a little delayed in moving that forward, um, but hopefully, this is going to happen. I'm working very, very hard to make sure we have the Leary lot done for the three three fiftieth celebrations once the snow's gone. Um, since I'm asking questions, I have one more and then I'll be done. Uh, what's the policy on putting a table from an outside group on town property? The um, One of the groups that was in touch with me would like to put a table on our land and possibly have Wi-Fi. Um, it's, if, if it's to the benefit of the town, you know, if it's a- It's a group or, that wants to be in the parade. Oh, then absolutely okay. no problem. I just wanted to make sure. We, okay. We, the select board, 
the select board will approve of anything that is a positive. Okay. okay. All right. And who is that, Diane? That was the Polish Genealogy Society. Okay. And where would they go? Uh, around the um the the old senior center, the brick one is. Would Wi-Fi be there or? Um, we we'll, probably do a hotspot or something like that. Okay, alrighty. Because um, once you get outside the buildings, even the town highway garage, it's really tough to have good Wi-Fi. So even though that's like a modern installation, so um, the best thing to do is just do a hotspot. Alrighty. Oh, yeah. I think you can borrow hotspots from the library. You can borrow from the library. We also have a cache. Um, the Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition has a cache of them too. So um, I can I can borrow one if necessary. Ready. Thank you. The library might be the easiest because you could just run in, borrow it, and then turn it turn it back in. But I'll get one from I'll get one from our cache if otherwise. I mean, it works fine too because the church is right next to the library. So, you know, that okay. a, a, a space for people to set up a table could be done between the church and the library. Okay. Anything like that, all we need to do is we just vote to say yes. It's, it's by, I just by, wanted to make sure. What the issue is liability. Okay. So, if if you come to us and ask us to do, you know, that they would like a table on town property and we vote yes as in our one of our meetings, select board meetings, then the person is doing a town sponsored activity that covers them for what <laughs> okay. And okay. and some, you know, if somebody catches their leg on the table leg and breaks an ankle or something. They're going to sue us no matter what, but because we went through the process, they're going to be covered by our insurance. Thank you. Alrighty, uh, Chris, we're moving on to new business now. Uh, Chris, you're up. Yeah, so the, the focus for the next up two and a half weeks is obviously final preparation for the Jubilee dinner dance um, and selling more tickets. So uh, again, I'll put a plug in, which I'll do at the next select board meeting too, is that um, you can go to the friendsofdeerfield.org website and under a drop down menu called events, you can actually register online to buy tickets or if somebody wants to uh, you do it via check, they can call Stan Adams and Stan Adams phone number is 413-665-4858. That's 413-665-4858. Um, so that'll be important because we, we're headed around 175 so far. We'd like to push it above 200, but um, you know we've got probably another week, week and a half where we need to finalize ticket sales. Um, and um, so, you know, the, the devil's in the detail now in terms of um, we've got a insurance policy issued I've got the town of Deerfield as other insured We've got Deerfield Academy as other insured um I've reached out to uh, Chief Chirk about parking and management of parking along Albany Road of course that might be dependent on exactly what happens in the weather in the next two and a half weeks um and um we'll go from there and, and see what we did but uh but that's um I think there was one request that came um because we I do want to have certain things on display. You mentioned that the time capsule itself possibly on display. But do we have any mock-ups or posters of the stamps that have been created by school children or what have you? Is there anything we can have poster boards of that or Nothing. anything? Nothing. I'm just collecting materials right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have a Kelly, you've been dealing with the stamps, right? Yeah, the, the pictorial postmarks. Yeah, I mean, I have the kids' drawings. We could just blow those up. We could just photocopy those and blow them up, right? Yeah. Oh, I think that that was. I think that's all Chris has actually for. done anything. Yeah, I mean, if we um, yeah, if we have a you know, we scan them and then and high res, pull them off, whatever, and put them on poster or something. Oh, that'd be good. 
Yeah. Chris, if you yeah. want, I don't know if you've seen the posters that I sort of created. I think I've got six of them now related to Deerfield history. I mean, you could use those if you want. Those are beautiful. You really should. And people are really interested in those. I've had so many comments of the one that was in the town hall. I, I forget what, what was the original one you put in the town hall, Peter? Well, I think there's three or four of them in there right now. I mean, there's the Mills, different faces of Deerfield. Um, it was the Mills one that you put in. That was the first yeah, one. I had, I had two that were for the Mills. Okay. Are they on, one was are they, built around Deerfield. And, they're gorgeous. Are they, are they on easels or anything like that? So, yeah. so we can. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, I'll get with our colleagues that are on the ground there and get reach out to um, Kelly and Peter and see what we can do and then try to create a layout plan quickly because we obviously can't have people tripping over anything or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But but uh, I'll get on that uh, before the end of this week because you know we're running out of time. But but things like that we probably can handle pretty quickly. Yeah, they're really beautiful, Chris. You'll be impressed. Chris, yeah, I'm, need... so, I'm sorry if I was writing while you were talking. Did you say how many tickets were sold? I think it's. I think we're pushing a hundred over one hundred and seventy or about one hundred and seventy. Okay. Well, I mean. I mean, it's it's not just sold because remember some of the big donors get comped tickets, right? Right. right? But, I, but we're I trying to we're trying attendance. to get we're trying to get the attendance. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, what's the best way to? Um, do you want to just drop me a line to, for hooking up with these? I mean, I can pick them up this week and. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I'll you know I'll talk to to Stan Adams, because he's the one kind of doing the layout with Deerfield Academy of where everything's going to be placed, tables, spaces, et cetera. And so um, I'll get with him tomorrow and then we'll get a hold of you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I can get down to the town hall and pick them up and have them all ready to go. I can, I also have mock-ups of all of these digitally. So if you want to have a look at them, I can send them to you. Oh, I think you should do that. Yeah, I definitely, definitely e email me or Dropbox or retransfer whatever way, depending on how big the digital files are. So the 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 posters are basically they're three by twos. Okay, three by twos. But I'll send you some mockups. Uh, So I think that's, um, you know, we had a discussion, um, Carolyn, before you were able to join about um, status of fireworks, et cetera. And um, I guess the question for you was, have we heard anything back from the application <laughs> you put in to DCR? I actually followed up today because I knew I was coming to the meeting and I was late. So I apologize for that. But um, they, the conservation person has not signed off and that is the last thing hurdle we have to go over. and i asked if there was anything that we could do or forward information or answer questions um at this point no they you know it was no information so yeah and um, i heard from fish and wildlife that that's the process you started on behalf of the town of deerfield with dcr was the right way to go and then they'll reach out to other experts in the fish and wildlife if they need. You know, to. Have they have they actually reached out to them yet? <clears throat> I think they they said it starts with what you did, uh, and then but they they they've hit given people heads up and they have some names. Oh, okay, people, you know, okay. Um, but the bottom line is the one thing we did, I got the update today is. They do not have history of nesting for that pair of falcons on that mountain now, so we can't we can't determine that they would leave earlier in June versus middle or later in June. So that's the one thing that they do not have in the state um, any historical data on this pair. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, well, yeah. we'll keep working on it, I guess. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. But at least that's that's good that they have started, you know, that there is a few conversations or at least names being transferred back and forth because that means they are working on it. I just was afraid that they no one was really moving on it. The first part went really fast and then we're sort of stuck. So yeah, I'm going to talk to the fireworks company. I already was in touch with them in the last couple of days. Um, I think we need to find an alternative site. We need to think about that now. Yeah. And not, I, and not waste any time. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll keep our fingers crossed. We'll, we'll keep working on it. But um, I think we should also have that alternative site. If that, uh, by working on the alternative <laughs> site, that means that we might not have to have use it, but if we don't do anything, then we're stuck. Right. So uh, I always like to prepare and then uh, then their opportunity comes along. We'll make sure it happens. And then that's how you get success. So yeah. I think that's part of the preparation is to have an alternative site. So Carolyn, um, before you joined us, um, when we were talking about the fireworks and some of the hiccups and things, um, it's come to our attention on the parade work group just in, in the last little bit. Two things. One, um, there is a um, Franklin County Pride organization, and their parade is most probably June 10th at noon which um, is going to be a big parade and potentially have conflicts with some of the towns and groups we will be looking to invite. And so this group um, earlier before you joined us tossed around whether or not we should move the date of the parade. And so the parade work group is gonna talk more at our January 9th meeting, but I, I think it would be helpful if we had some other people other than the work group there, like yourself, anybody from this group. Um, Chris, um, if you wanted to join us as well, if you could, um, I'm gonna try to do it either hybrid or Zoom so we could have uh, people participate, but we just sent the invitations out. And so we will have to get on that quickly if we're going to move the date um, because it's going to impact the rest of what we're doing. Absolutely. Um, so you're going to do it January 9th? January 9th, 630. We're having our next parade work group. Okay. Um, I'll include this group as well as the parade work group when I send out the um, confirmation for the meeting. Um, you know what, I'll get, I'll get it posted as a select board meeting. Cause, um, I think, t I know Tim would be interested and, um, hopefully Trevor can make it too. And then we can help you with who, who is Kim, Tim, Tim, Hill. Oh, Tim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so we were going to have a work group meeting. So you're saying you want to have a select board meeting? Well, if if there's more than one, we have to post it. Otherwise, it's an open meeting uh, violation. So, gotcha. All right. Why don't, why don't I, Kelly and I will um, regroup and I'll connect with you offline to see how we do that so we don't have oh, to. No, no, no. Well, I, I can post it. I mean, I'll get it posted through our office. I know. But, but if we're, we're having other stuff to talk about, too, it's OK that it's just under the select board? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And, and it's good for Tim and uh, Trevor to be involved in it too. So, okay. okay. Um, um, so I'll 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 get it posted, and I think it probably would be better to be a Zoom. Um, I mean, yeah, I okay think so. Because it could be. I mean, we want to get as many people as possible together. Yep. Um, because okay. that's a huge decision, but. I, I, I think can understand what you want to do. And I think um, it's, it's not what we want to do, Carolyn. We, we sent the invitations out. It's what we may have to do. 
I know. I meant to. Yeah. I yeah. Um, so that makes a huge difference. Um, and, it, and if there is an issue on Sugarloaf because of the uh, Falcons, maybe we could find a better time of year that people would work with us. Um, I don't know. Well, the I, it's is just, there's, to... there's layers on layers of things. So I know. But two weeks might make a big difference. Um, they don't have a historical um, record for the, that pair, but do we have a um, like average of other ones, Chris? Do they fish and wildlife have? Yeah, they have some other ones. And the thing is, it, it, it varies. So mid June is mid June. The tenth of June is cutting it too close. That's that's probably the, the issue. So if, we, if we made it later, it would be more acceptable, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that could Holly. This could be how we get this done as for everything. So. Well, I I think when we originally talked about a parade date, though, we weren't going to go later in June. We would go to the fall if we do anything. Right. Well, we were worried about the. Uh, um, we, we want the schools to be in session so they would participate. Right. Uh, and we want the marching band. We don't want them out on summer break and nobody's going to do it for us. Right. Well, also the heat, um, you know, well, now. Right. But um, I can tell you, um, I don't think the Frontier Band did the Waitley Parade. Right. Um, and it, it's a deficit. I mean, they're part of our town. We want, you know, the band to be part of it. Chris, is it possible to get some information on, on September? Actually, September would be um, very conducive to uh, the Falcons. That would not be an issue. And um, and actually, the bald eagles that are down in the river itself are done with nesting by then too. Well, then we move. Maybe we move our parade to the fall, like we talked about. Although it can still be bloody hot in September. Well, um, we have the first two weekends our local fairs, and then we've got the festival of the hills. We we definitely will have to look at everybody's calendar again which we did before, um, we I just know. didn't know about this pride parade. Yeah. Diane? You're on mute, sweet sweetheart. Can we do the parade in June and do the fireworks in September? I think we should do it together. We okay. really want to do it together. Because okay. it's the impact, it's the impact. All righty. If, pe if people are going to stick around for the parade, they'll stick around for the fireworks. If they're right. going to stick around for the fireworks or they're interested in the fireworks, they'll, you know, they'll be here for the parade and people can barbecue or whatever. And we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to, we'll look at sports schedules if we're going to look in September too. Oh, yes. Mm. That's the only problem. <clears throat> sports are still going or, you know, started up. It's an active valley. Um, the only thing is, if we did it when there's a football game, uh, that might actually be a plus. So we won't but, have... Aren't football games on Friday nights? I don't know. Maybe we could have a special one on a Saturday night. It's it's They wouldn't be set for September yet. So we could call Carl at the um, at the um, high school. See, he's the athletic director. See if he could put a special request in. I mean, they have special requests. The basketball boys basketball and girls basketball this weekend varsity started at the Mullen Center, but they could only get the Mullen Center for Sunday. So they had Sunday morning basketball opening um, or Saturday morning. Excuse me. Um, Saturday morning opening. So it, it we can do the same thing. We can just request the football game be on a Saturday instead of, and so that would be some of our transitional events to the fireworks from the parade to the fireworks. 
Maybe we could even figure out a homecoming. I mean, do they still do homecoming? I don't even know. Car Carolyn, you're making my head spin. <laughs> no, but <you're> making, <laughs> no, seriously, we don't right. have volunteers to it's set like up we're music starting and all over again. set up food. And, and, and if just... we have a football game at the high school, then where's everybody going to park if we need the parking lot for the parade? Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. The football at night, usually at night. Oh, I mean, usually so... later. Okay, so let's crazy. let's talk on January 9th. <laughs> oh. January well, 9th? Saying, yeah, yeah, January 9th. I'll I'll call Carl. I'll find out what the possibilities oh, are. Okay, you're I'll even find out. I don't mind asking him because I'm an old lady. So I don't mind asking him if they even do homecoming anymore. Um or home events. I, I they must. They must. I'm sure they don't have kings and queens anymore and all that baloney, but I'm sure they have some special event. So let me find out what's going on, what we have to do, give them a, to request stuff. So I'll figure it out before January 9th. Okay. Thank you. Chris, do you have any more to, you want to report out for friends of Deerfield? No, I'm good right now. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to what's the set of meeting schedules for, I think the first three or four months in, in uh, 2023, if you want to continue with the same um, time frame that we're using right now, or? Last well, we have, I think we should meet January 9th as a committee with the parade work group. This is pretty serious discussions, okay? And we got to make decisions because Chris, Chris is gonna, uh, you know, have the fireworks people down here and all kinds of stuff. So we we've got to have, this has got to be cleared up. So you want to have a joint meeting, and you I want to then focus on just on the the parade, what the the evolution of where we are from now. Yeah, we got to get this. We 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 got to make this all. Straight down. Um, it, Peter, you said joint meeting. The parade group has enough to talk about. So doing <laughs> steering right. committee right. tasks at the same time, uh, no can do. Maybe. No, this is single topic, yeah. single topic, only well, single topic. Actually, the parade work group has other things we've got to deal with. Oh, I know, but we can, we can, we can do a joint meeting for the discussion of the date. And then you can continue on with your meeting. Okay. okay. You you post your meeting with your agenda. We What's don't that? post. We're a work oh, group. Oh, oh, that's right. Well, we'll post as a steering committee. The first agenda item is we we need to just sort out all the parade stuff. Okay. And all the decisions related to parade. And Holly, it would be very helpful if you could just circulate a list of the things that are considerations. I re think I remember some of them, but it would be very well, helpful. Well, what we need to just square away is the date. Right, but what are the considerations for that date? Remember we had a whole list of stuff that we talked about, how we ended up with the June date, okay? Uh -huh. so the same questions we will have, I can look in the minutes somewhere there, because um, I people took good minutes, you took good minutes. Um, we would have the same questions for as we do we move that date okay and okay so you're saying like frontiers and sessions so the marching band would be available right those okay. are things there was a whole list of things that we that we went over why we picked the june date okay okay we narrowed it down it met certain criteria and one of the i mean it still could be hot but likelihood it may be not as hot as it would be in August or June or July, which is, you know, one of the reasons we didn't, we decided not to have a summer, not just because the schools wouldn't participate, but also it was very hot. Potentially it could be hot. It could be over a hundred degrees. We don't, we can't, you can't, <clears throat> and you have other issues, health issues. Um, remember we had that whole list. Okay, I don't remember a huge list, but I know we talked about it. I'll, yeah. I'll look back. 
Hollywood would it work uh, to the the parade committee's advantage is if you met, let's say a, a half an hour or, or more before we stepped in to say, okay, how are we going to move forward? Do, do you do you want the time to consider the information that you've collected, talk among yourselves, and then we then you can sort of convey that to I, steering committee and others or um kelly i like your input on this but i think we could probably manage this within our group through email ahead of time I and agree. just be kind of organized yeah i agree okay we'll okay, be organized so, okay so um we'll plan on january 9th at 6 30 is that yep yeah I agree that that needs to take, be taken care of as soon as we try to address it as soon as we possibly can. So um, do you want us to stay with the last Monday of the of the month fall, uh, after that? Works for me. Yes. Um, stay. I don't think. Yep. Gonna, yeah, I yep. don't think. We're going to run into too many too much trouble i don't think we're going to run into stuff until memorial day um so could we do the week before the may 22nd yeah well let's go let's try february 1st can you what's the last day of the last you want Monday the dates before? yeah if you would we got okay. january we got january the, 30th january 30th are we doing the 30th if we're doing the 9th, though? That's I, steering committee. The yeah, parade is on the 9th. I know. I was just talking about it. Okay. It's a lot, a lot but it, I, I think that if we do things organized ahead with the parade work group, I think the meeting on the 9th, I can't imagine it's going to be in more than an hour. It's going to be deciding on a date change or not. I think we should do the 30th just because it's the start of the year and we want to confirm stuff or iron out issues. So I would feel comfortable. We can always cancel it if it's seemingly we don't have any new business, you know, any real business. But I would rather have say that we're going to meet on the 30th at this point. And then um, February 27th. And then March 27th. And April 24th, um, right now the town meeting is scheduled for April 17th. Uh, it's the third Monday of the month, but um, we're thinking of moving uh, town meeting into May. So I, I wouldn't worry about the April date at this point, okay. So we're probably far enough out um, right now, uh, April 24th, if there's any last minute things that need to get resolved before Founders Day on May um, 7th, 5, 6, 7, that's probably a good time. Uh, we'll know as we move closer to that, maybe in March, you know, by March, whether there's pressing issues that we might want to have a, an alternate meeting in or emergency meeting date set, but I think we can delay that. So we've got uh, five meetings set right now. So that, that should be fine. Okay. Um, so we've carried the lighting. Um, Chris has covered the tickets. Oh, I just, um, one of the things that I was thinking about, and this is probably a question for you, Carolyn, or somebody who knows the school, um, using the auditorium at Frontier for some of the talks, the talk, uh, speaking programs, the history programs. And um, th there's a process um, for using the auditorium, uh, signing up, that's fine. Uh, is there a cost to doing this? We're, a, I think we're essentially as a town no, there, there should not entity. be a cost because it's a town entity. That is correct. Okay. 
Now, what, what about uh, the janitorial staff and that sort of thing? Who, who's responsible for that? Uh, usually the school um, pays for it, but um, th this would be during a weekend. Pro would it be a weekend? Probably. It, okay. could be it could be during the it, it, part of it depends on the schedule and part of it depends on how much. I mean, I could see if it mirrors something like Historic Deerfield will put on, there may be, you know, three or four different speakers, which means it could go for quite a part of it, quite a bit of the day or a single speaker it could be a couple hours. And so that could be a Thursday or, you know, whatever. It, during the week. Uh, they just adjust the schedule. So there's no cost. I think uh, if you have something on the weekend like that, um, that's not like a t official legal town meeting or something like that, they probably have to have the person come in and they would be on overtime. So there could be an expense, Peter, but don't worry, that would be, you know, 350. Is I think it's a legitimate yeah. cost. I just want to... Yeah. You know, in thinking about preparing things, if we if part of what I want to know, they're very accommodating. The they're very accommodating. So if it was during the week, I'm sure they would adjust the schedule at no cost. But um, weekend is a different thing, and plus it would uh, be overtime. So that has that's perfect. That's perfectly fair. Yeah. I mean, oh no, it is. I, it is. I'm just I'm saying. Just, that. I'm just trying to figure out what I need to think about in terms of accommodating that space. Yeah. Um, I would assume that they would want a donation uh, to cover the expense on that. Yeah. I mean, I, I can talk to them once we firmed it up. I've got calls out right now to PVMA and Historic Deerfield to try and get together before Christmas to resolve schedules. They also might, um, somebody might volunteer to come in and just open up the school and then close it. And then whatever cleanup is necessary, then they would do, do that on the regular, yeah. right, yeah. regular, um, because they would come in regular Monday and they could maybe clean it up before class. It depends if there was a class there scheduled for like 8 a.m. Monday, whatever. So this would be in the auditorium though. Yeah. Well, they have classes and I mean, there's music. Oh, do they? Okay. Uh, the music practice in there, so I think, oh, okay. groups at eight o'clock in the morning. So, um, but I, I'm not saying it's Monday, a Monday after your event. I'm just saying it potentially could be. And part of a poll to the group, I mean, one of the things we've been thinking about was doing a, some genealogy or history workshops. Um, what are people's feelings about that? I think people would be fascinated. Rocky's already got his done. <laughs> Peter, would this be where people could start to explore their own ancestry? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I like the idea. Me too. But, you know, how to go about doing it. Yeah. Or the resources think, you can use to. That could, be, that could be tricky, I could tell you. <laughs> well, this is like 101, Geology 101, right, Peter? You might find out stuff you well, don't. Well, you might find that there's more rocks than sedimentary, metamorphic, and, and igneous, though, <laughs> when you start dealing with genealogies. I no, think it's, it's fabulous. I think it's fabulous. Um, I had a nice gathering at the senior center one day with about 12 people talking about genealogy. So but we, we've got some... Uh, some pretty good expertise in, in either our own or adjacent towns uh, in terms of genealogy. So, and Gary and I have certainly been into how do you do deed research and that sort of thing. So, I gotta I gotta go and get my kid from basketball. Alrighty. Well, Bye, I think that's Thank the, you. I think that's the last agenda item I had here anyway. So. Um, I'll take a motion to adjourn unless somebody has some other, any other thing that they want to bring up. I'll make, I make a motion. motion that we adjourn. I'll second that, Carolyn. I think Jay just thirded it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were unmuted, Jay, so we are faster to the. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, 
you know, we did pretty good. The last time we uh, met, I, I pulled up an old agenda. We, we, we uh, adjourned at 814. We exceeded that by only three minutes this time, and we had a good deal of discussion. So um, I thank you all, and we're adjourned. Do we thank need to you. vote to adjourn? Yes, you vote? have to adjourn. All right. We you have to have a roll adjourn? call vote. Hi, Holly. Hi, Carol. Hi, I just want to say thank you very much to Chris. Thank you for coming, Chris. I, uh, thank you. Really oh, you're welcome. I really okay. appreciate your coming. <laughs>